Hey everybody, this is Rob with MMORPG.com and I'm here today to talk to you about Rift. More specifically, I want to talk to you about the Carnival of the Ascended. And what good is any carnival without games? And this carnival does in fact have games. At first you can see I'm playing some kind of modified version of Ring Toss where the, I'm attempting to toss rings on these skull caps that are running around in a circle. I'm not too successful at it. Once I rage quit and move on from this, I head on over to a modified version of a horse trap. Now the goal of this is to pick a team and to stack on the platforms and jump up and down. And the platform that has the fastest jumpers is usually going to win. While this could be a competitive game, typically what happens is people will stack up on the same colored platform as we do here and jump as fast as they can and pretty well take out any risk of losing. Now while we wait for this to begin, I wanted to talk about some other things that have changed too. I used to be a pretty hardcore raider in Rift. I stopped last November. At the time my guild was on Achilles, but since then the game has made some pretty big changes with the implementation of patch 1.7. One of these such changes is the elimination of tier 1 and tier 2 expert dungeons. Tryon's gone back and retuned all of the expert dungeons to reclassify them and create a single tier of expert dungeons. Also, with the Looking for Dungeon tool, you can earn greater marks of ascension to purchase Tier 2 raid gear. As we make our way over to the vendors, you can see that there are different prizes you can buy, and some of which here are balloons of the dragons that we've either killed or you're going to get to kill in upcoming patches. Here we see that there's a fortune teller, there's someone that can guess your weight, and most of these things are bought with either tickets or glass beads, which are the different currency that you can collect in this world event, just like in the last world event where you could collect snowflakes, and the world event before that it was magma tokens, and the world event before that it was rune king seals. More on that later. This vendor sells purchasable titles. These become open as different phases of the world event complete themselves. As of right now, we're on the second phase, so only the first title's available. If the fake horse races weren't your thing, let's head on down to Shimmer Sand where we can actually try our hands at a real one. As you can see here, you get to race around the outskirts and through the city center of Fortune Shore located in Shimmer Sand. In this race, I ran unopposed. Once completed, you teleport back to the very beginning and collect your prize. In addition to actually adding carnival games, they also added pinatas to help with the fun. I was so excited to find this one of Achilles and be able to kill him for the first time that I jumped off a cliff and killed myself in the process. I also found a balloon of Lathus. There are also green scale and Malforge, but I was unable to locate those in the limited time I played. One of the things that's always set Tryon apart from the other developers to me was the ability in which they could create new content and patch it into their games. The following two fights are from Master Mode Caduceus Rise, which is a new instance that's been added in with, I believe it was patch 1.6. This instance has 11 total bosses. It's more than a lot of raids and other games have. And this is for five men. In addition to this master mode dungeon, they did add another 10 man sliver, Rise of the Phoenix in as well.
Not to be content to just creating content for the group raid experience, Tryon also released another chronicle. This is an instance geared at one to two people in order to tell the story of what happened in River of Souls. Normally this would only be available to a raid group, and this is a way to make the game more accessible to the casual player. So far, Tryon has added a new 10-man instance, a new 5-man instance, a new 2-man instance, and now they've added an entirely new continent to include its own zone events, Ember Isle. Ember Isle is easily as big as Shimmer Sand. Currently in the video, you can see the final stages of the new water-based zone event. And you can also see that we find a little PvP to go along with it. Speaking of PvP, if PvE isn't your thing, Rift has you covered too. To help better speed up Warfront queues, the system can automatically switch you to a mercenary and have you fight on the side of the opposite faction. As you might be able to tell, I'm a bomby, and I should be a defiant, but I have a Guardian logo on my character portrait. This is because I've been converted to a mercenary. Tryon's also upgraded Library of the Rune Masters. They finally added achievements into it. This is by far my favorite Warfront out of the five, and achievements just make it that much nicer. Tryon's also added a new feature to help out the new and returning players alike. They have templates that give recommended skill builds. While I don't necessarily agree with the warrior tank builds they offer, it is a place to start instead of just spraying your talent points across three unrelated trees if you have no idea what you're doing. With the promised addition of leaderboards, player housing, gathering skills, Rift is a very bright future indeed. Not to mention, when are we finally going to be able to go through the rifts and into the other elemental planes? However, that isn't to say Rift isn't without its flaws. The world events do seem to get a tad bit monotonous with the completion of a Rift, collect the currency, buy the prize. I think they're on their eighth currency right now. Also, I don't know exactly why, but Rift seems to have a grayish hue to it. This makes everything appear to be washed out in color. However, I can't say that these two pictures don't look badass. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would give Rift a solid 8. Rift is free to play from levels 1 to 20, so it is worth downloading to try out. If you don't like it, you really haven't lost anything. If you haven't tried Rift, I would say it is the best MMO that you've never played. I hope you found this video informative and possibly even a little entertaining. As always, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter, at Graculin. Thanks, and have a great day.